Hello there you gorgeous beautiful people, this is Chris from Techspert and I'm here with the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3 5G. Not the Mi Mix 5 3G as I've called it in the previous 20 takes, finally get there. It's not my fault alright, it's super hot here in London and us Northerners are not built for the heat. But anywho, the Mi Mix 3 5G is one of the most affordable ways of jumping on that 5G bandwagon right now as it's rolling out across the UK. I've just reviewed Samsung's Galaxy S10 5G, it's a bit of a 5G week here on Techspert, but that'll cost about twice as much as the Mi Mix 3 5G and this still sports some really nice premium specs including the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 chipset. So let's just get out of this rather boring black box, take a look at the phone, and of course, what you actually get in the rest of the box as well. It's a bit of a beast, this thing. We've got a nice little uh, message from Lee Jun here. We will constantly invest, constantly strive, and constantly break through. Lots of constants here. Be friends with our users, be the coolest company in the hearts of our users. You're cool to us, Lee. So, of course, you've got your uh, three pin plug and your USB cable. Bit of Type C action, of course. What else do we get in here? We do actually get a uh, bundled cover as well to help protect your uh, your lovely new investment. Not exactly the most exciting of, uh, of cases, just have little bit of a uh, mix branding down there but apart from that it's just your bog standard boring hard plasticky shell it's got a bit of a soft touch to it though as you can see that just slaps on there and uh, it doesn't add much in the way of girth to the actual handset and of course it will keep it nice and pristine hopefully protect it if you drop the bugger as well and in here you also get a bit of type c to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack action as well because unfortunately there is no headphone port here on the Mi Mix 3 5G. Of course, if you really, really want a headphone jack, you can just pay about five or 600 quid extra for the S10 5G, job done. So let's take a look at the actual Mi Mix 3 5G itself in all of its glory. It's already, oh, there we go, nice little bit of slidey action, spoiler alert. I was hoping to save that for later, but yes, it does have a uh, pop-out camera in the style of uh, various Oppo phones and the rest. And of course, the fact that it's got that slide out motion means that it is quite a chunky monkey, as you can see there. It's definitely a girthy smartphone, weighs quite a, a bit as well at 225 grams. It's one of the heftiest smartphones out there right now. Like the S10 5G, which I just reviewed, it's got lovely shiny mirrored silvery sort of finish to it. So you can see exactly how much of a sweaty, disgusting mess you really are. Ugh. As you can see there, uh, it's already getting nice and smudgy in my uh, my sweaty palms, lovely stuff. And if I'm remembering the specs correctly, I believe that the Mi Mix 3 5G has a ceramic finish to it, nice and premium, although that will of course contribute to the heft. As you can see, it's quite obvious you've got the 5G model with a nice bit of the uh, the logo action right there. And you do actually get a physical fingerprint sensor as well, which is quite nice. I'm not a massive fan of the in-display ones. They can be a bit hit and miss, whereas the physical ones tend to be a bit more dependable and a bit more uh, rapid in, uh, in Acton as well. Uh, not much of an indentation there. It is almost flush with the surface, but you can just about make out the boundaries there. Oh God, I'm so sweaty. And it looks like it's already been all set up for us by the PR, so don't even have to go through the setup process. Nice and easy. I'll just get it connected to the Wi-Fi and everything, and then we can have a good old explore of the software and the specs. So of course, the major advantage of that slide out selfie cam is the fact that of course, you don't have any notches or pinhole camera action intruding on the display right here. It is a full view screen. And as you can see, they're quite skinny bezels here on the Mi Mix 3 5G as well. So that screen does take up the vast majority of the front of the phone. As for the display itself, it's a 6.39 inch AMOLED display manufactured by Samsung. So as you can expect, nice punchy colors. It's HD already, uh, so decent contrast and everything on it as well. And with that lovely full view finish as well, it means that it's gonna be fantastic for viewing your movies over the 5G ultra fast network. Not as crisp as some rivals like the Galaxy S10 5G with its full HD plus uh, resolution here on the Mi Mix 3 5G. Uh, but you know what? Perfectly crisp anyway for viewing your video and you've got full contrast control over the likes of the color output as well, uh, the contrast. And because you've got MIUI on here as well, you can even activate the dark mode if you like. Nice. And for those of you who've never used a Xiaomi phone before, you do get the latest version of Android here, it's Android Pie, but you do get Xiaomi's own MIUI over there, slapped on top, one might even say slopped on top. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of MIUI, I've got to say, I find it a little bit messy, a little bit janky here and there, um, but it's certainly very feature packed, there's lots of additional stuff, as you can see there, just scrolling through the settings, tons of bonus features. I know a lot of people do like MIUI, and there are quite a lot of uh, good customization options in there, but I just find it, it's a bit of a chore to sort of uh, work your way around it, work out exactly where it is. I just prefer the neatness of stock Android, but of course, uh, that's not for everyone. One of the features that I do really like, however, because I'm a bit of a geek, is the fact that you can actually assign sound effects when you pop out that selfie camera. And my favorite is definitely the warrior ones. It basically sounds like you're unsheathing a samurai sword. Very satisfying. 
Of course, one of the things I'm definitely not a fan of is the fact that you do not get an apps tray, unfortunately, with the Mi Mix 3 5G or Xiaomi's Mi UI in general. You do for some reason on the Poco launcher, uh, but they've absolutely neglected to put that in uh, just standard Mi UI, which is really, really annoying. You've only got the, uh, the system launcher uh, there. So you can always chuck, obviously, your own launcher on top if that bothers you, and I'd recommend doing so, to be honest. Now, power in this bad boy is the Snapdragon 855 chipset, one of the most premium platforms that you can get in a smartphone right now. Uh, that puts it on a par with like, the Galaxy S10 5G, which as I mentioned is a lot more expensive. Uh, so it's uh, surprisingly energy efficient, this platform, uh, great performance and everything as well. So you'll be able to play the latest games with an absolutely super smooth frame rate. And it's got six gigs of RAM back in it as well. So basically you'll be able to do everything you need to, no worries. As for the battery tech, well, it's a 3,800 milliamp cells stuffed inside. So hopefully that should keep you going all day long on a full charge and it supports quick charge for plus plus as well from Qualcomm, so hopefully it shouldn't take too long to power back up again. As for the storage, well, there's 128 gigs in there right now. I've just had a quick peek and there's 108 gigs free for whatever you need. It is just a single SIM tray, however, uh, there's no dual SIM and there's no micro SD memory card support in there either. So you are stuck with that 128. Uh, should be absolutely fine for most people. It's only if you're uh, do doing a lot of uh, 4K video records and uh, things like that, downloading a hell of a lot of Netflix stuff to, uh, to watch on the go that you'll start to struggle. Now let's finish up this unboxing of the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3 5G with a quick look at that camera tech. So as you can see here on the back, it's a dual lens snap and a nice bit of LED action there in the middle. It's a 12 megapixel primary lens, f1.8, and that's using Sony's IMX363 sensor. And that's backed by a secondary 12 megapixel lens, so you don't get any ultra wide angle funkiness or telephoto jazz or anything like that. And that's using a Samsung sensor. And if we load up the camera, you'll see this basically uses Xiaomi's standard camera app, which can be a bit intimidating if you haven't used one of these before. It's very feature dense, shall we say, loads of different camera modes to flick between. So obviously you've got full photo mode, which you start on with a bit of AI smart. So all that means is uh, it's just basically scene detection. It just helps to tweak their camera settings to suit the current subject. You can turn that on or off. You've of course got an HDR mode as well, which you can stick on auto if you like. Uh, you've got a portrait mode for shooting your subject complete with the likes of studio light and effect. You've got a dedicated night mode for when things get uh, a bit low light and that's basically a long exposure type thing. You've got full pro manual controls as well if you want to mess around with the likes of the shutter speed, ISO levels, uh, all that kind of shenanigans. If you want to shoot a bit of video, uh, let's just dive into the settings. I believe you can shoot up to 4K resolution as you can with most smartphones these days to be fair. Yep, and you can even shoot it at 4K at up to 60 frames per second, which is nice to see. And you also have a slow motion. I believe you can shoot 960 frames per second. Yep, there we go, uh, 960 FPS. So you'll get some super slow motion action on the go. But as you can see there, the slow motion capture will start at the last quarter of the recording. So it's, uh, it's a bit tricky to get the timing just right. You do have to have a bit of uh, luck slash good reactions on your side. And then if we just slide out that front face and selfie camera, it's another dual lens uh, snapper. So you've got a 24 megapixel primary lens, again, using a Sony sensor, I believe it's the IMX576. And that's backed by a basic two megapixel depth sensor, quite handy if you want to be taking a bit of portrait shot action. And once again, you can shoot video, uh, I believe up to full HD resolution. Yeah, that one tops off at full HD for your selfie uh, video, and no worries there. And oh man, I do love that sword effect. Uh, so that in a nutshell anyway, sorry I'm pissing about now, that's the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3 5G. Full unboxing so you can see exactly what you get in the box, and that's a tour of the specs, the hardware and the software as well. So stay tuned, I'll be doing a full in-depth review of this bad boy. You can pick it up right now from the likes of Vodafone uh, on a contract, and as I say, it is one of the more affordable 5G options out there. Still packing some premium specs and quite a funky design as well, as long as you don't mind a bit of a hefty chunky handset. So what are you thinking? Definitely let me know in the comments down below. I don't know why my voice went all weird. Sorry, I think my brain is just actually melting out of my nostrils right now. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell if you haven't already. And have yourselves a lovely day, people. Love you.